Well, hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of Harebrained Games, The Week in Games. It has been two weeks since my last confession. Uh, in all seriousness, it's uh, just on the cusp of school getting out. I know I'm excited for school to be done with for my kids' sake. I'm sure the teachers are, because I can tell by the way they put in their grants. And uh, I know the kids are too. So close! And that means summertime gaming. That's right, those hot, sweltering 20 minutes of sun we get in the Pacific Northwest every year. I'm looking forward to that. I gotta watch out for it. It's rarer than an eclipse. Not really. In all cases, actually, the weather here is usually pretty good in the summer. Um, and gaming in the cool AC will help us cope. Let's get to the news. All right, some news this week. Uh, AEG has announced a game called Dead Reckoning. Now, as someone who is an aficionado and a fan favorite of pirates and pirate games, this is a little known, relatively obscure, but unique take on piracy and pirating and that you, the focus is on exploring, on upgrading your crew. It has what I mean, has been described as a mystic veil type upgrade system, which I find very curious indeed. It's extensible, it describes sort of saga content. Uh, it's it's way too much of a curiosity of for me not to investigate. Uh, it's also probably guaranteed an insta purchase for me because eh, pirates. Other news: Fields of Fire 2 and The Last Hundred Yards, Command and Conquer's Medieval, or shipping now. Now these are games from GMT Games, which for those of you who are into war games, will will you know, that's that's a whole just love fest of of beauteousness. But they're not they're not for the weak of for the faint of heart, these are these are some awesome looking war games coming on the horizon. Uh, and after that, we have the latest coin game called Gandhi, which is a uh, <laughs> counterinsurgency game featuring the man of peace called Gandhi. Uh, this is shaping up to be the most tanless summer ever, though, and that's awesome. Another news: Hostage Negotiator was a game I did a review on several years ago uh, that was really tense, single-player game that really just e evocative, uh, like just tension of trying to talk down uh, someone who is holding hostages. Uh, it, the latest in this quirky style is a legacy game where your state persists over the course of the game, sort of like a career mode. I loved the first one, but it was very stressful and it was very, very difficult, uh, as it should be, given the premise. Um, I'm not sure if I'll back it, but I, I do think it's intriguing enough for others to take a look, especially if they haven't played the original, that it might be interesting to have the career of the negotiator. Um, lately I've been sort of migrating towards less failure-friendly type of solo games, less stressful, but I'm not you, and uh, those who love a challenge, you're going to find it here. And finally, I think we all know by now that the uh, Chinese trade relations stuff has started trickling in, and I'm very curious how it's going to affect my Kickstarter purchases. I've only had a couple of responses from things I've Kickstarted, where most of the Kickstarted products come from China, and uh, some of them have mentioned that they're going to try and make it work without having to, to in, in, you know, pass on costs and such, but I'm generally interested in, you know, Politics aside, whatever the just the the practical um, ramifications are still yet unknown. Uh, but I do hope things work out because hey, we love gaming. And with that, let's get to my question of the week. Question was, do you customize your games? which is kind of growing, particularly with the advent of 3D printers and and third parties sort of group groups that actually provide beefed up components and such. So the answer is generally no. I don't customize my game, mostly because of just quantity versus quality. I'm sure if I was someone who, who bought a fraction of my games and played them like like inversely, fractionally, proportionally more, uh, that I probably would be more akin to do it. But um, because I'm such an avid procurer, then I, I don't really spend a lot of extra time doing that. E even poor components I'll just deal with for the most part. Um, I don't do anniversary editions very much if I already own the game. I, one exception would probably be War of the Ring, because, uh, you know, Lord of the Rings. Um, one exception to that rule, though, is I did back for terraforming Mars. Uh, I didn't. I did actually. The date, like when you get, like, like player maps that have actual 
date dense detente in the board uh, when you're playing terraforming Mars and you're shifting cubes around it matters a lot escape and escape plan and scythe pretty much convinced me that that was a no-brainer I leave the door open to customizing games and I'm, I'm actually really stoked when I see other people doing that same thing uh, there was a friend of mine Mike Parkinson who used to do board game makeovers on the dice tower and uh, he would come up with some of the craziest makeover type things and such and I always thought that was interesting and this is sort of an extension of that in that you're you're just blinging out your your games but to answer the question in the most simplest of terms no I don't usually customize my games and I don't usually plan to with that let's get to my three games of the week first off ah, Shady Torby Arion this is the fifth I believe or fifth or sixth uh, entry in his small box series of single player games that have the it's unique in that each one of these games is very very different but they all kind of feel shady torby like and what usually happens is you have a base game that you master and then there's probably seven or eight different variants uh, with pieces and extra components included that sort of amp up the di sometimes amp up the difficulty sometimes just make it a little different so uh, Arion Next we have Fields of Fire 2. Now I almost played the first one and really almost enjoyed it. Uh, the manual was amazing to read through. I probably spent hours reading the manual. So yeah, I almost really liked uh, the first Fields of Fire 2 uh, from from the time all the times I almost played it. Um, but now that Fields of Fire 2 is out instead of Fields of Fire, then clearly I'm going to have either another game to almost absolutely adore or Maybe I will actually crack this one open and play both, but um, not for the faint of heart as far as rules go. Uh, very ingenious, though, I will say. Very ingenious system. And then the last 100 yards. I picked this up on a whim because the price was very, very low. It looks like the first foray in a game designed by Mike Denson. Um, it's sort of small-scale tactical or yeah, combat um, that looks like it's... It has a unique kind of, you know, sort of phase system. Uh, a lot of its people who have played it already have said, you know, instead of doing the you go, I go, you go, I go kind of thing, that this has more of a sort of a shifting phase. Like I have just started to read the manual on it yet, but it is here, it is ready, and I am stoked to give it a try. Hopefully, there'll be a review. On that note, I do have a review coming up of. Lord of the Rings, Journeys in Middle Earth. I have hesitated greatly because, well, I'll explain the reasons in the review. Um, with that, let's get to Is Tim Full of Crap? Okay, next up in our games, going alphabetically, as I, re as I look back on the ratings I gave games and decide if I was full of crap or not, was first and goal. This is one of the sports games I bit on. As people who listen to me before know, I'm not a huge fan of sports uh, board games. I just don't think they all, they all they usually do is make me want to go out and actually play the game for real. Um, but there are exceptions, and this is one of them that's generally an exception. First and Goal is a sports game. Uh, it's a sports game that isn't swingy, it isn't unrealistic, and it actually does tend to lead you to try to make wise basketball choices wise football choices you know in in light of what your opponent's team composition is like which is really football it's you know football's war and you uh you know if you stick with it and you you know, even the extra team packs and it's decent enough you will get that feel of you know, lining up for plays of running a play you will get these that isn't simplistic i played some very bad football games where it was really just a crapshoot uh with a with a thin football like veneer and those just I don't, I don't have any time for those, I just don't. Uh, this actually did a good job, though, of trying to say, in this context, this would be a standard, reasonable play to run. If you run it, you will probably have the best chance of success given the situation. And that's really where this game shines better than any other football game uh, simulation to me, uh, is that it does teach, almost kind of teach you to go from a high level, this is, this is you know, third and four, second and long, etc. You do get that feel and it does plausibly work out. So um, I gave it a 7.25 because apparently 7.26 was taken that day. Uh, and I would probably keep it at about a 7 still. 
definitely good enough to keep. Uh, not earth shattering, but haven't found something better. I definitely liked it better than Pizza Box Football. So, and that's it. That's what we have this week. I appreciate everyone who listens in. I like, I just like this channel and I like the comments I get and how kind and just nice people are. Uh, I thank you for that. This is, this is very cool. So thanks again and we'll see you next time on Hairbrain Games.